Hello again. Here's a quick video on how to wind these skeins of yarn into a ball so you can knit more easily with them. In fact, don't start knitting from a skein. Now, sock yarn usually comes in hanks of 50 grams, like these two are, or of 100 grams. So 100 grams is twice as big. I'm going to use one of these to demonstrate. It's kind of wound in a figure eight with a little bit of a sort of a tongue sticking out of one end here. So really be careful as you're uh, getting it set up because it can turn into an awful mess if you're not super careful. So I'm going to undo this figure eight thing. That's pretty easy. It's twisted. It's actually a big loop. And it's a little scary the first time you do it, but it's all fine because it is tied together in a couple of places. Perhaps you can see here, they've thoughtfully used a different colour to tie it together. So here it's tied together with red. Uh, no, it's not black. And it's tied in kind of a crisscrossy version to keep these pieces of yarn from getting tangled purposely. You can see it's tied kind of like in an ongoing figure of eight coming through here. So, <clears throat> sorry, the first thing I'm going to do is stretch it out like this. And half of it is going to be off camera, but it's the same at one end as the other. I'm going to either undo the knot that ties this together, or I'm going to just cut it. So I think I'm going to undo it just because I'm kind of cheap and don't want to waste it. Uh, maybe I'm just going to cut it after all. Hoping you can see this here. This is where it's been tied like sideways. And here they've tied this black yarn into the green from the actual yarn you'll be using. And that's two ends from the green. I am just going to cut it just for speed. It's just an inch or two. Am I going to cut it or is it tied specially? Let me look carefully. Usually they use one end at, to tie it in one place and one end at the other. So I'm not going to cut it just in case. I'm going to just untie it. It takes a little bit of patience, but it gets you can feel the yarn as you're working with it, which is quite nice. Let's see. I'm going to pause the recording while I untie it. Oh, it's nearly done. I've undone one side and here at the other side, I've just slipped the knot because it was just two black ends tied together. And I'm taking this yarn off that was used to tie, but I'm trying to keep this nice and flat and even just how it was tied. And now you really need like a little brother or a little sister or a grandmother or somebody to hold the yarn while you wind. I'm going to leave this on until I get to it and just, well, maybe I need to take it off. I'll take it off. Um, there we go. It's handy to leave the label with the yarn you're working on, though. So it tells you to hand wash, dry flat, whatever, or machine wash, gentle, whatever it tells you to do. That's what you do. Now, um... Here I've got this skein, this loop now, right? It goes from one end, oopsies, all the way to the other end like that. And if you have a friendly little brother or little sister, you're going to want to ask them to put their hands like this and you're going to loop it over their hands. So again, this hand is like this. This is sitting like this, right? So you can grab it if you need to, if it looks like it's falling off your hand, but it keeps it nice and straight like that. Most grandmothers have done this, or at least my grandmother had me sit for hours while she wound. And my mother. And I did it gladly. So here I've got, again, one end here like this, some here, and it's stretched out here. And my other hand is here. Now it's a little tricky to demonstrate without somebody else holding it. But if you imagine that this is being held fairly firmly, not tight, don't stretch it, right? Don't hold it so tight you can't wind it. But don't get you know, soft and loose and wibbly and, and don't like cross your arms or anything while you're doing it. So just hold it nice and firm. And then the winder, we'll pretend my hands are in it. The winder finds the end somewhere. Maybe you know where it is already. Here it is. And choose one end. If you can, you'll see that one end is kind of on the inside and one end is kind of on the outside. And it's going to be easier to wind if you start with the end that's on the outside. 
So I'm laying it down as if it's on people's hands, right? And I, now I'm just going to wind it. And I always wind like we did with uh, when we started knitting. Two fingers with a bit of space in between. I'm, I'm pulling off a little bit of slack here from the outside of that loop. And now I'm winding just like we always did. There is a way to wind a center pull ball, but I'll show you that another time. And then I wind the other way, always round my finger, because I don't want to stretch the elasticity out of the yarn. Okay, and I'm going round and round and round and round. I'm going to pause it again a little bit so that um, you can see if I get into a tangle, that's when I'll show you how to deal with a tangle. Well, hello again. I haven't got into a tangle yet. It looks like I'm not going to because this is really nicely wound. A couple of quick things. If you do get into a tangle, don't pull it tighter. Just keep it super loose, right? You've seen me do that in class probably. Just loosen it up, put, kind of pull it sideways. Don't pull it so you make the knot or the tangle tighter. The other thing is if, you, um, if your helper gets a bit tired and wants to do something else, then just have them put it down like out of their hands like this. Just put it down in a loop and twist it up like this and then put it back together in the hank like you got it. So you twist tighter and tighter and tighter like this, one hand or two. And then you just put one end, it doesn't matter which end, through the oops, through the other end. And if you haven't dropped the ball on the floor like I just had, no, no, there we go. Then you can just leave it next to it and you can carry on winding. Now, while, and then when you pick it up, you just undo it again. Lay it down carefully in that loop like we talked about. So untwist it till you can see the loop. Where are we now? I'm almost there. There's the loop, looks a little tangly, but I'm certain it's not because I know it was wound right. I can just check that out if I need to. And I might need to just turn it over a little bit so that the part I'm winding lies on the outside of the loop. That does actually make it easier. We go round and round again. You see I'm going in the opposite direction, it doesn't matter. As long as I can get the yarn easy. If you do come into a tangle, try not to sort of Put the ball through the knot or something like that if you think it's a knot because it's not actually knotted and if you put this ball through something you're going to make a knot that you'll have to deal with at some point maybe not right away here's another quick tip lots of tips i've done this a lot and i quite enjoy doing this with somebody actually shame you can't do it in class but it's a nice rhythm you can get into if your helper is holding it like this, and as you wind, you see this yarn is coming in this direction towards me here, right? As you wind, if they sort of go into this rhythm of moving like this, kind of like a teeter-totter or something, up and down like that, then when this yarn comes to their hand, you'll figure this out. It's hard to show without another person. When this comes to their hand, I've got to turn that off, then they move their hand so that you can go around it more easily and the thumb here is always really important otherwise it could slip right off their hand okay i think that's given you everything you need to know you might want to watch this a couple of times the main thing you want to do is to kind of follow the path quite respectfully of the yarn because it is wound like this in the hank so that you can wind it into a ball easily and if you pull out a lot like this sometimes it does get tangled let's just see Ah, oh, yeah, see, there's a little tangly thing happening here. I'm holding it here so I make sure only one piece of yarn goes around the ball at a time. And if I get this into a tighter knot than this, which it isn't, luckily, then I just kind of let it relax like that. And don't pull it tight and it will turn out right. Okay, good luck. This is really fun. I'm going to wind my own sock yarn next. I have some white, soft, fluffy alpaca and I'm going to wind that for myself okay see you soon on zoom